good morning. It is so good to see you all this morning. It's good to see you in person as well as it's good to see some people on Zoom this morning. It is a, a great morning to be together and to come together to worship our amazing God this morning. So let us begin with a welcome to all who are here this morning. Welcome to worship. <laughs> welcome for those who are seeking healing and hope. You have come to the right place. God awaits you. God loves you, forgives you, and awaits you here in this place. Praise be to God, to be to the patient and steadfast love of God. And so today's scripture reading comes from the book of Matthew 10, verses 7 and 8. Jesus called his 12 disciples together. And he gave them authority to cast out evil spirits and to heal every kind of disease or illness. Go and announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, and cast out demons. Give as freely as you have received. This is the word of the Lord. So do you remember being a kid and you're on the playground and you're playing some game and you're waiting for the instructions and the countdown? Ready, set, you have your foot on the line and you're ready for the moment that they say go and off you are. Anybody remember that? What were some of your favorite games that had a ready, set, go to that? Relay races. Yeah, I mean, hide and see, yeah, hide and seek had a ready, ready, set, go. So there's games for ready, set, go. I know that some of you have been watching the Olympics, and while there isn't quite the ready, set, go, and Judy, I tried to watch the curling, and I don't know when they start. I don't know what the <laughs> signal is, but um, most of them have a signal that you know that things are be ready to begin, that they're supposed to go. So there's a buzzer when they do the downhill skiing. They drop the puck in the middle of the uh, ice for the ice hockey games. The song begins for the uh, skaters. So that is their go. The competition has started, you need to move. Today's lesson is about Jesus telling his disciples to go. It's time that you need to get about the work that I have come here for, and I have already prepared you, and so go. Go out and do all of the things that I have been doing. And, you know, I wonder, how are we hearing Jesus say go to us today? Will you pray with me, please? Dear God, we, we're here and we're listening. And just help me to share a word that encourages your people to go in your name. Amen. So there is a Jewish blessing. And the blessing says, may you be covered in the dust of your rabbi. May you be covered in the dust of your rabbi. And the idea is that if in ancient times, if you were following your teacher or your rabbi so closely that they would literally, as they're walking along the sandy or dirty roads, the dust that was kind of coming off of their shoes would get onto you because you are walking the walk right alongside that rabbi and that you are that close that that dust will get all over you. May you be covered in the dust of your rabbi. Today's lesson comes shortly after Jesus has chosen his disciples. And these men have had a chance already to hear Jesus preach. 
They've seen him heal. They've seen him cast out demons. And so they have been with the crowds with him and they have been captivated by him. They've also seen that the leaders of the synagogue and of the temple are incensed by him. And now Jesus has seen the potential in them, this group of men, and he has invited them to be his disciples. And you know, they must have thought that this was such a wonderful privilege to have been chosen. You know, the rabbi would not choose someone unless they realized or believed that they could go out and be just like them. And so Jesus chooses these disciples. And actually the word disciple means follower. So he chooses these who are following them, him because he trusts them. He trusts that they too would be able to do the same things that he's been doing. Teaching, preaching, healing, setting people free in the footsteps of their rabbi. Now I wonder, maybe that just felt a little frightening. Now on this day, Jesus gathers them together and he tells them, I give you the authority, the direction, and the power to do what I have been doing. Go forth. Go forth and announce that the kingdom of God is here and let them see this through the acts that you will do in my name. Now, for the first century listener, that pronouncement of the kingdom of God is near meant that the kingdom line, the king that came, the line that came out of the king of David would be restored, and that the power would be returned to the Jews, and they would no longer live under the oppression of the Romans. And so they were waiting for a sign. They were waiting for some evidence of Jesus's earthly kingdom to be one of power and authority. But this different, differed from the kingdom that Jesus was talking about. The kingdom of God was a way of describing the reign, not of an earthly king, but of God. John Wesley described it as the reign of God that is both present and future. So yes, we trust that in heaven, God reigns with all the angels and, and all the saints, and, and that is part of God's kingdom. But Jesus is saying that that state can be found here on earth too that the kingdom of god can present itself right here and right now as christians we believe that wherever god's will is done the kingdom of god is present it was present in jesus's ministry but we trust that it is also present in our world today wherever persons or communities experience reconciliation or restoration or healing. There is an undeniable connection between the kingdom of God and the restoration of wholeness. That citizens of Jesus's kingdom would love God, but they would also love their neighbor. You know, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we pray it every week here in worship. Many, maybe many of you pray it in your, your daily prayers to God. 
And when we pray it, we proclaim once again that the kingdom of God is here and that we are actively working to be a part of it. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are saying that what happens in heaven can happen in some small way here on earth when we open ourselves up to God's will and we accept our part of doing the work. You see, that's the go. It's not passive, but we accept our part of being a kingdom builder. The invitation to discipleship or to follow Jesus <clears throat> remains with us today, just as it was there for Jesus's disciples. We are invited to become disciples and to make disciples. We as United Methodists believe this so much that that is our tagline, to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Not to make disciples of Jesus Christ so we can fill up our churches, not to make disciples of Jesus Christ so we can collect more money, but to make disciples of Jesus Christ so the world and all of its messiness will be whole again and be transformed. You are called to be part of that. So how will we go? All of healing belongs to God. Healing is not magic, but it has an underlying great mystery of God's love. And those who offer healing are offering channels of God's love. You know, God uses medicine or proper care of one's health as part of the gift of healing. And these gifts that add to our total resources to bring about wholeness. So for some of you, you use your gift in the realm of healing by answering the call to be a nurse or an EMT or a physical therapist or other areas of the medical profession. But other of, of you, you support people to live healthy lives through your work in fitness or other areas of health and wellness. But healing happens not just to our physical bodies, but it also takes place in the emotional and the mental and the financial and our spiritual lives. God offers wholeness and healing for our complete being. So my question this morning, where are your gifts for healing? Will you offer people relief from their financial burdens? Or maybe there's a place where you're coming alongside people and you're offering them peace of mind in other ways. Maybe it's the gift of music. Maybe it's the gift of preparing a meal. Maybe it's the gift of coaching and coming alongside young people. Maybe it's just going out there every day and doing your best and offering kindness and love. Because I think that's what our world needs more than anything else at this time. Are you called to be a partner with God in the work of spiritual healing? How can you offer balance or harmony or wholeness of body and mind and spirit to others through relationships or forgiveness or reconciliation? I want you to look for a moment deep within yourself 
and ask, answer the question, who is in my life right now that needs hope? And how can I be the one, through the help of Jesus Christ, to go and provide that hope? The wonderful news is, like the disciples, we are not sent to do this work alone, on our own. But instead, Jesus is with us to do this work, and we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. There is a saying that said, healing is Jesus meeting us at our point of need. And so we are called to offer Jesus to people in the world around us, and then God will do the rest. All we need to do is recognize that there is a need and go. So I invite you today to consider that you too have been gathered together by Jesus and you too have been called to be agents of God's healing. So how will you bring people to Jesus? Not just to church, which that's a nice step, but to Jesus, to offer them that healing touch that God has empowered you with. The kingdom of God is at hand. God is waiting for you. Ready, set, go. I have you. I have you. I have you. You have me. You have me. You have me. We have each other. We have each we other. Have each other. We'll reach out to others. We'll reach we'll out reach to out others. others. And God has us all. And God, God has, us, has all. us all. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. Have a great week. For those who joined us online, thank you so much. We're grateful that you joined us. And we look forward to coming together again next week. Have a great day.